particular bill in terms of those who will walk away uh, with advantages and those who will lose. We do have uh, in terms of, uh, you know, winners, parking fee reduced to 200 from 300 Kenya shillings. As the Treasury had earlier uh, proposed 400, this is definitely a win. However, uh, it is still yet to be implemented and, of course, uh, passed. We will see if that goes into uh, law. Also, fee for approval of building plans has been capped at 0.5% of uh, total construction costs. That's from 3%. So that is clearly a great uh, reduction that we are seeing on that particular front. Also, if we'll see hotel owners, a food handler certificate a fee has been reduced to 1,000 shillings. That is from 7,000 shillings per month, as you can see right there. These are some of the uh, particular winners when it comes to the finance bill and the propositions made through it. However, if we look at the other side and those who are not necessarily winning from this particular uh, proposition, we do see taxi firms who are to pay between 100 to 300,000 Kenya shillings for licenses. As of now, uh, online taxi hailing application um, operating companies do not require any operating licenses in uh, this particular scenario. We also see corporate trade fairs and exhibitions. When you uh, talk about pitching tents and parks for commercial purposes, you could be required to pay between 10 to 30,000 Kenya shillings. And uh, when we speak of stationary trucks for road shows, and these are particularly applying to, of course, uh, preachers, corporates, politicians as well, you could be charged 5,000, and the ones that are moving would be charged 20,000 shillings. All right, now I want to, of course, invite uh, Ken Gishinga, our uh, Mentoria CEO and economist, once again onto uh, this set for us to break down some of the top stories of the week on this week in perspective. As always, thank you so much, Ken, once again for joining us. Let's just begin with this particular, actually, uh, story that we have, of course, with the Nairobi Finance Bill. What do you think, what stands out to you the most when it comes to those who are being hit by this? The taxi firms, of course, mm -hmm. 100 to 300,000 shillings for a license, that's a very, very steep price. Think of it, an Uber driver yes. buys a Toyota, uh, maybe Ractis, for about 800 to 900,000 shillings. For him to pay an additional 300,000 shillings for a license, that's, it's going to make it, and this, by the way, these people are getting loans from banks to be able to buy these things. It's going to be very, very difficult for them to be able to enter that industry. And that's an industry that is creating jobs for people who, previous to the digital taxi revolution, mm -hmm. never had any opportunity. So for me, I think that will be my the, the biggest loser in this finance bill. Well, of course, it will. Yes, they will, I'm sure, have to contribute a certain chunk if this were to come into effect. But it's the um, operating companies who then hire these who will also have to incur this major cost. But I'm sure they will pick, of course, from these drivers in person in order to foot this particular um, charge. They need to clarify that. Mm. They need to make it very clear because as it's put right now, it's not very clear where the onus lies. True. And I think a lot of taxi drivers will be panicking when they see such an amount because, yes, it could come to them directly or indirectly, but either way, it's going to make their cost of doing business uh, very difficult, especially after the cost of oil, fuel, going yes. up only a few months ago. Absolutely. And uh, if, we, if we'll go back to the winner's side, when we talk about uh, that uh, 200 shillings from 300 shillings uh, parking fee reduction, what are your thoughts on that? Obviously, any driving motorist will welcome that. Mm. Uh, but thinking long term, one of the things we talked about is can we reduce the number of private cars coming to the CBD because that's what's causing the congestion. Yes. I think it would have been better if they had kept it at 300 shillings mm. just to maintain the sanity okay. and use maybe reduce, um, maybe get the extra reduction from maybe some of the other subsectors that they were looking at because if you walk to if you go to downtown any day today mm. i mean the traffic jam is incredible and we yes. really have to think of a way other cities do it by hiking the the parking fees other cities do it, do by li by auctioning licenses where you have to sort of bid for a license mm. to, to go into the city so i think we need to be a bit more sort of like think out of the box in mm. terms of how do we manage traffic and I think that could have been an opportunity. So you know one of the criticisms of that especially is that those people who do not want to pay this fee actually just bribe attendants 100 shillings which is again half of that 200 so that they get their way. So I think also there needs to be uh, some sort of framework put into place to limit those sorts of actions and to ensure that that doesn't occur. 
That's a good point. But remember, it's also been digitized. Mm. Right now, it's all happening through the mobile phone. So the opportunity for changing money, changing hands is becoming less and less. True. Okay, and uh, let's move on now to our uh, second, one of the stories that is be, has been talked about quite a bit this week. It is, of course, Kenya Airways, and they have once again reduced the flights, direct flights to the U.S. now from 7 to 5, with effect from next year. And we've also seen that they were to launch actually direct flights to uh, Mogadishu, which they were to launch on the 5th of December, uh, but it did not happen, and they, they, didn't, they have now said that they, these flights will be operated by Jumbo Jet. And and uh, what, what do you think is happening with the routes in relations to KQ and how does it translate economically? Well, it's tough. It's, I think the aviation industry is going through a very tough uh, period, not just for Kenya Airways, even the bigger airlines mm -hmm. like um, Emirates have gone down 86% in terms of profits. I think for KQ, um, obviously the direct flight to New York was supposed to be a game changer. But the reality is there's so much competition on that route that they've actually had to reduce it to five flights. Um, a week and maybe next year they might actually bump it up but the reality is these flights need to turn around KQ has been making losses for quite a number of years and they really have to think through uh, their cost management and I think the thinking was what's the point of having seven flights a week yes. when maybe half of them are going on half capacity that doesn't make sense maybe consolidate it to five days a week and at least have those uh, flights full I think that's better mathematics I think that's better economics mm. uh, but definitely it's it's a blow to possibly the narrative they had tried to put up on October when they launched those direct flights. But again, their stance has been that it's not dwindling numbers of people who are going. It's actually just the winter period and downward season and things like that. So it's interesting to see how that will uh, play out. And as we've seen also cargo uh, in terms of this flight supposedly increasing that sort of uh, export um, you know, situation when it comes to Kenya and the U.S. Uh, do you think that is still a very viable option? I think there are some two dynamics at play because sometimes you talk to passengers yes. and they tell you right now it's the prices for an air ticket are incredibly high. People are quoting almost $3,000 but when you actually call the actual airlines they tell you there's a lot of space. So Sometimes you wonder okay I think something is not at, at miss. Mm. I think part of their strategy will be to look at the cargo market because we've talked about Kenyan produce uh, entering the American market and I think that's a big opportunity and I think the costs involved are much lower than with handling people so I think that could be a, a, a fantastic um, opportunity but I think looking forward we've talked about the regional advantage KQ has mm. and I think part of their strategy has to be really focusing more on Africa yes have connections to New York to Dubai to London but really the bulk of your profit has to be taking advantage of what we call the African rising narrative. Okay, and as we as we talk about that African rising narrative, again, they were supposed to launch the Nairobi Mogadishu direct flights. They did not, and instead say they'd be operated by Jumbo Jet. So, uh, why do you think that that entire um, scenario unfolded? Uh, insurance, pretty much. I don't mm. think they had um, fully complied with the insurance requirements, um, which was a bit shocking because if you think of the requirements to enter the American market. They're very, very rigorous, and they complied very well. Um, for them to have overlooked the insurance aspect in a route that's as less lucrative as New York, as Mogadishu, for me, I found it a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit. But they said they, they'll sort it out uh, by the first week of December. Mm. But I, would, I, I, I was curious that such a small thing would have actually postponed it. But I think Mogadishu is the third largest market for Kenyan produce. And I think it's a route that sometimes we don't talk about enough. True. And I think it's the profitability opportunities there are immense. So the okay. sooner they can get that um, on board, I think the better. All right. And finally, of course, uh, we have this uh, massive, uh, you know, situation happening at the Kenya Pipeline Commission. We have seen uh, MD Joe Sung as well as four others who have been arrested this morning. And that is over that uh, massive fuel uh, mishap that had happened. And, and we've also seen a lot of scandals, a lot of controversy surrounding KPC. What are your uh, thoughts on that finally as we wrap up, Ken? I think the 21 million liters that has been lost, I think that's the that's what broke the camel's back mm. but as you as you as you've correctly mentioned that this has been a series of scandals in the past we've seen tenders that have not been um, that have been single sourced we've seen a lot of things that did not go the right way True. happening and i think this what happened this week at the kisumu oil jetty was really a, a combination of 
past past um, uh, grievances around the management at Kenya Pipeline. So it's a very sensitive dock at Kenya Pipeline because we've always talked about the importance of fuel, the cost of fuel in this economy and ability to get things right or wrong mm. really has an implication on the overall side of the economy. So I think that has been a turning point for Kenya Pipeline. Who's going to come next? We don't, do not know, but I think the public will be very, very particular around the Kenya pipelines, the Kenya powers of this economy. Who and what is going to come next for KPC, we will of course see. But thank you so much, Ken, for shedding light on these particular stories for us today on This Week in Perspective. Thank you very much. All right. Well, another Bank of Kigali Group PLC has become the first ever Rwandese firm to cross list on the NSC this past